deduction for preliminary expenditure now what happens is that whenever a company is formed okay company formed or the business takes up some substantial expansion okay so let's say till date you were manufacturing 100 quantity of goods and you try to set up a new factory where 500 more goods are going to be produced so you are expanding your business substantially then there are certain expenditure which are incurred by the business okay now these expenditure actually in case let's say for example they are formed before the company is formed are not a revenue expenditure they are kind of a capital expenditure right but these expenditures are allowed as a deduction as preliminary expenditure under this particular clause which is section 35 d okay so let us read them one by one eligible assessee what does this mean who all can came to deduct, claim deduction for preliminary expenditure either an indian company okay which means what that a foreign company cannot claim deduction for preliminary expenditure or a resident non-corporate assessee now we all know that assessee comprise of various categories right so if you are an assessee other than a corporate assessee which means other than a company and you are a resident so a resident non-corporate assessee then also you can claim deduction for preliminary expenditure so let's say you are a firm partnership firm set up in india you can claim a deduction for preliminary expenditure right the next point is when should the expenditure be incurred what is the point in time when this expenditure should be incurred it can be incurred before the commencement of business let's say you are setting up a new company before you start your business you might incur some expenditure which will fall within the purview of preliminary expenditure right and what all are included here that we will see it right away then after the commencement of business in connection with setting up a new unit or extension of an existing business so there could be two situations as we saw this here as well when you start afresh a company is formed before you commence your business before you start your business you might incur some expenditure which could be in the nature of preliminary expenses or if you are setting up a new unit or you are taking substantial expansion of business then in those two cases also you might incur some expenditure which may qualify as a preliminary expenditure right in both these cases you will be allowed a deduction quantum of expenditure allowed as a deduction so deduction allowed shall be allowed as least of the following two amounts so you will compare these two amounts actually it is one and two a and b you will compare a with b okay and whichever is the lower that is going to be allowed one-fifth of the amount in equal installments so let's say if a is equal to 100 b is equal to 200 then the least of the following two is 100 this 100 is going to be allowed to you in five equal installments and what are these a and b a is actual amount incurred for specified purposes what are these specified purposes that we will see in the next slide or higher of 5% of the cost of the project or capital employed in case of an Indian company. So B is again divided into two categories, one, two. One is for the Indian company and two is for the other assessees, right? So in case of an Indian company, right, you will be allowed higher of 5% of the cost of the project. Meaning of cost of project, again, we see in the next slide, or capital employed. Whereas in case you are not a corporate SSE, then you are allowed a deduction for 5% of the cost of the project. So what do we, how do we proceed? We first calculate B, we then calculate A. B will be di different depending on whether it's an Indian company or other SSE. Once you get the number of B, you compare it with A. Whatever is the least amongst A and B is allowed as a deduction. Okay. And how is it allowed as a deduction? In five equal installments, one fifth of a mountain five equal installments now what are the conditions 
is it that preliminary expenditure is allowed as it is? No. There are certain conditions which are to be met. The expenditure on specified purposes means the following expenditure incurred on. A sessi himself, so either you incur these expenses yourself or a concern approved by the board. Right? So in these cases, preparation of feasibility report or a project report, conducting market survey or any other survey necessary for the business. So let's say you want to set up a company or you want to set up a business and you want to conduct a market survey, whether this is feasible or not. Okay? So you prepare a feasibility report, you do a market survey, right? Or you incur some expenditure in respect of engineering services relating to the business, right? Now, when the SSE is a company, even the following expenditure are added to the amount what we have discussed here, right? Legal charges for drafting any agreement, fee for registering the company. I think these are self-explanatory, so I'm not getting into the details for each one of them. Legal charges of drafting and printing the memorandum of association and article of association. Share debenture issue expenses, underwriting commission, brokerage and charges for drafting, typing, printing and advertisement of prospectus. Now the portion which I am now highlighting here, this one is specific to a company. Right? Where the SSE is a company, even these are added to the total cost. Right? And for the other one, these are the expenditures, right? Let's move on to the next slide now to see other things relating to preliminary expenditure. Now we saw earlier there was a term that, you know, the amount to be allowed is 5% of the cost of the project or capital employed, right? So what is the meaning of these two terms? When we talk about the cost of the project, what we mean is the actual cost of the fixed assets like land, building, leaseholds, plant and machinery, furniture, railway slidings as shown in the books of accounts of the SSE on the last day of the previous year in which the business of the SSE commences business. Right? And then about the capital employed, capital employed includes share capital which includes premium but excludes reserves, right? Plus debentures plus long-term borrowing on the last day of the previous year when the business is commenced. So let's say an SSE sets up a business. The setting up it takes place during 2009, 10-11 and it starts commencement on 1st June 2011. Now this date falls within financial year 2011-2012, right? So these two numbers which are to be calculated has to be calculated on the last day of the previous year in which the business of the SSE commences. If your business commences in 11-12, then the last day of this previous year is what? March 31, 2012. Right? So you take these numbers based on the balance sheet of March 31, 2012. And then audit report. In case of a non-corporate SSE, he is required to furnish the audit report along with the return of income of the first year, right? To claim these deductions.